Just how deep can we look from our backyard? Welcome to SETI Astro. So after my last uh, Galaxy video that I put out there, I had some people wondering, like, if I if I really went for it, what what would I be able to see? So that's that's what I did. I chose a random Galaxy chain uh, that that looked like it was going to be in my sky the whole night that I could image. I didn't even know what I would be shooting or if there'd be anything interesting in it at all. So. <laughs> I got 1,400 luminance exposures, each a minute long. So uh, just about 23 and a half hours of luminance. Uh, and, and even just the STF looks like it's overstretching right off the bat. You know, it's, the, the noise floor is, is very, very low on, on the luminance. For the R, G, and B, I took enough what I considered uh, enough color data that I would need I took uh, 64 three-minute exposures each of R, G, and B. So just a little over nine hours for the color data. And I always, always say, if you're shooting galaxies, take narrowband data too. You never know what you're going to find. I was hoping I'd see maybe some tendrils connecting the, the galaxy chain together or something. But what's in this hydrogen image is much more interesting. I was not anticipating this. So I took uh, one full night, 32 exposures, uh, 15 minutes each of hydrogen, and I noticed something going on here in the middle. You may not even be able to see it right now. And um, I was like, I, I, I need more data. So I, I got another full night. So in the end, I got 64 15-minute exposures of just hydrogen. So that's 16 hours of hydrogen, roughly 24 hours of luminance, nine hours for colored data. All in all, I got over 48 hours of exposure in, in this image. Now for the continuum subtraction, I actually downsampled both the hydrogen and red channels by two, essentially binning all the pixels together. I wanted to get as much signal to noise ratio as I could at the, at the you know expense of resolution, but the structure here in hydrogen is very broad i wasn't really worried about resolution so after doing continuum subtraction i was left with this so gradients are, are very touchy when you're doing continuum subtraction especially when you're stretching so hard to see any faint structures but sure enough here in the middle is this very large band of hydrogen that i did not see in any image of this region that I've that I've looked at and uh, there, there's some pretty deep exposures out there of this but I think everybody's been focused on LRGB and nobody's taken really hydrogen of this whole area so we have this huge band of hydrogen flowing right through the middle of the image which I was not anticipating at all when I started this you have to do some cleanup when you're uh, dealing with narrowband data where the stars were removed and, and a few other things. Night Photons has a, a great script as well where you could do some starless continuum subtraction. Uh, I have one as well in my continuum subtraction utility. And I, and I had to kind of merge a couple techniques to, to clean it up a little bit. And then I had to rescale up then to the, the luminance resolution. So luminance was drizzled, RG and B were not drizzled. And then for this continuum subtraction, I actually downsampled. And then prior to merger with uh, the LRGB image, you really have to clean up the continuum subtracted data because any lightness in the background is just going to translate directly over into whatever channel you're looking at. So you really have to be pretty aggressive with your curves and stuff to isolate what you want to show in your main image. But as far as the, the data itself, you know, there, there is definitely prominently this, this hydrogen whoosh right, right in the middle with, with, another, with another bow shock or, or something off here. So not, not sure what this structure is tied to at all. So for the luminance, removing the stars, stretching it, you could just see the huge amount of galaxies now uh in, in in this image we have some very interesting shaped ones here this one has some tidal tails you 
You got this gorgeous one here with the spirals. This one down here with other uh, title tales of these two interacting. And NGC 1275 has a bunch of internal structure in here uh, that, that you don't see very often in, in images either. So for the RGB image, this has been calibrated with SPCC, so I wanted the, the galaxy colors to be as true as possible. Removing the stars left a lot of artifacts, but that wouldn't be an issue since we didn't have those artifacts on the luminance. That'll be taken care of when we add the luminance right now. Now here's adding the luminance back in. We still have our correct colors in our galaxies. Now it's a matter of just getting rid of some of the brightness in the background and, and tweaking some curves. Now at this point is where I actually add back in the continuum subtracted data. I just screened it in on the red channel. So that brought where that is in line with the, the rest of the image here. And then a few more processing tweaks just to get it to where I, I want it for the, for the starless image. The other thing I wanted to do is frame it better so I, I do end up rotating it 90 degrees and cropping it in for the for the final starless image after putting the rgb stars back in that did leave me with my with my final image here and then rotating it the 90 degrees as well and cropping it in left me with my my final published so to speak my my, my final work that i i put online I also made a very comprehensive annotated version on the non-crop, non-rotated. I also cobbled together some crappy Python code to, to scrape the Simbad website and look for distances to any of the galaxies that I had listed in here. And, and that was the, one of the points, just how, just how far can we look? And this one here, it is not point-like. There is structure to it. It's not big, uh, but it is sitting at 1.8 billion light years away. There are plenty other further distant objects. There are a couple quasars that are much farther in the distance. Down here by NGC 1282 and 83, there's a quasar right here that's sitting over 20 billion light years away. So, so that is a long ways away. The, uh, the universe was only... A little over 2 billion years old when that light was emitted. So I've also updated Astrobin with my deep look on the Perseus Galaxy Cluster. It's also known as Abel 426. I have the starry and starless versions. I have all my annotation. I have all my acquisition details here, where it is in the sky, and, and some write-ups. I also have uh, like the minimally processed continuum subtracted H-alpha to look at some close-in crops of some of these very interesting galaxies and some of those very distant objects off in the distance as well. Well, I hope you guys liked a, a deep look from my backyard. And again, if you're, if you're shooting galaxies, take some narrowband. You never know what you're going to find out there. Please comment, like, and subscribe.